Hi, in this video I'll show you how I draw my characters using the Wacom Cintiq 16 and Photoshop. I always start with a simple sketch, sometimes I draw it on the paper and then scan it, but most often I work directly on Photoshop. I convert the sketch into multiply mode with 30% opacity and place it in the topmost layer. I will work with color in the lower layers. Later the sketch can be removed or all layers may be merged together. So I start working with color with simple flat fills. I use an ordinary hard brush. At this stage I don't care about accuracy, now I just need to get a color sketch for my further work. I fill with color the skin of the girl, eyes, lips, hair and shirt. Well, don't forget about the cat. You can draw each element on a separate layer, but in the process I often connect all the layers into one, to speed up the work and not to be confused and their huge number. But if you are not sure and may need to edit your drawing in the future, then it's better not to do so. the main shadows. At this stage I work with soft and hard brushes with the opacity of 20-30%. I draw shadows on the face and the hand. In the same way, I draw light areas, the face becomes more dimensional. the shadows, sometimes I use a multiply mode. To make soft color gradient, I use a smudge tool or remove the borders with a white and soft eraser with the opacity of 20-40%. I connected all the layers into one. From time to time I copy the working layer to save the stages just in case. Now we can gradually begin to work out the details. I usually start with the eyes, probably because most of all I like to draw exactly the eyes.
with a transparent brush. The roots are thicker and at the ends they are thinner. Don't forget about it. Also, I don't like eyelashes too bright at once. I prefer to add contrast gradually. to work with tones. Here it is important not to overuse highlights so that the skin doesn't look too glossy or plastic. My lines are best done a little clearer so that the work doesn't look blurred. Make sure that the borders of the picture are not too sharp. For example, the transition between the cheek and the background should be made a little softer.
I continue to draw the eyes. I emphasize the eye lines and add some details. Now, let's add small highlights to make accents. I make the eyelashes a little brighter and add a small shadow from the eyelashes to the lower eyelids. I decided to add a shadow behind of the girl to make the background a little more interesting. So that the shadow is not too sharp, I add a blur to it. Now, when the background is darker, the girl's cheek has become too flat. To change it, I darken this area. I do the same with the hand and shirt. To soften this transition even more, I slightly blur the border of the cheek with a smudge tool.
to work on the details. Let's start drawing the paint behind the ear. First, as usual, we'll make a simple fill with black. Don't forget also about the shadow of it. Let's draw the main hair shadows. In more detail, I will draw hair a little later. For now, just define the light and dark areas of the head. The white shirt is also not flat. It has falls and shadows. Let's draw them. And now we can start with the cat. At first, I just make a color sketch to decide on the coloring. the fur with a smudge tool. I use an ordinary hair brush. It's as if I drag the entire surface with it in the direction of fur growth.
some areas and again do the same thing with the smudge tool. I'll just repeat the same thing a thousand times. Also, for a long time I couldn't decide on this cat. At this stage I decided to give it a warmer shade. Since I'm still unhappy with the cat, I changed my mind and made a grey using the color mode. It also seems to me that the tail spoils the composition and I've decided to remove it. To make the fur look more attractive, at the end I add individual hairs with a thin hair brush and also I draw the moustache and small details.
drawing the four it's difficult to stop. It seems you can draw it forever. I think now I can get out of the cat's hair. In accurate places with a soft brush. By the way, it's more convenient to smooth large areas with a soft white brush, and it's better to work with small ones with the smudge tool. Draw the shadow of the hair on the face using the multiply mode and slightly blur it to make it look softer. To be honest, I don't like to draw ears at all.
Finally, I move on to drawing the hair. This is one of my favorite parts, so I left it for last. I draw the hair on serial players, time to time connecting them into one. When drawing hairs, it's important that they don't look too uniform. I will try to give them a bit of roundness. At this stage, you don't need to draw every hair. It's better to start with the total mass and then go to the strands and at the end you can draw a few serial hairs. In drawing hair, I often use a smudge tool, as well as a hard brush and soft eraser, to soften the borders. Generally, drawing hair is better to be patient.
sides to the pan to fetch it out and make it more contrast and also some last details. Our drawing is almost done. So that's all guys, thank you for watching, I hope this video was useful for you, bye!